This is Albert, a data analyst gone freelancer. I actually tripled my income by working one day less per week. And just like Albert, more and more tech professionals are becoming freelancers so they can earn more. I earn 50K a month. To 40,000. 10K per month. 400 a day. While working less. 20 hours a week. Four days a week. And working from anywhere. Go to Japan tomorrow. Going on a sabbatical for a few months in South America. And today I asked one of the highest paid tech freelancers out there to explain how they became freelancers themselves and to break down exactly how any tech professional watching this can do the same. How did you find your first freelance project? It was an uh, outbound reach by me that I was just like applying. I saw the job posting there. I was like, why not give it a shot? The site was uh, so bad that you actually couldn't like apply on it itself. So it was just a pop up an Outlook window that you will send an email. They started reaching out to me and with they, I mean recruiters. However, before they start reaching out to me, I set up my profile. And I said this button, I think there's a button somewhere you can say I'm available. Mm -hmm. But I only set up that button once I knew my LinkedIn page is perfectly clear and concise and to the point. Recruiter messaged me, we need a contractor ASAP when you're available to start. Messaged him and then it was actually legit that I had a short interview. Two minutes after the interview, I landed the role. Personal connections. Yeah, there was a, it was a law firm based in New York. I reached out to a recruiter and she just called me back right away and, so, and told me that I, she had a job, that it was perfect for me and, and A lot of people have it wrong. They just try to pitch their services, but end of the day, businesses only care about making money and we're saving money. So if your project doesn't do one of the two things, it's like, it's pretty fruitless reaching out to them. Pitching. Yeah, you pitch the results. Exactly. What is it you do? So I actually have been doing data science and analytics for the past four years now. Currently, I work as a freelance data analyst for an international airport. So I'm a freelance Tableau visualization expert for a company in the nuclear industry. Data scientist based in Toronto, Canada. And what made you decide to make the jump to freelancing? Two things, uh, one financial and two freedom. I wanted to pick what I wanted to do instead of someone else picking what I should be doing. Just to gain more of a sense of control of my career, especially with social media, knowing that the more I put myself out there, the more of a chance I can attract the right opportunities for myself. I think the main thing is money. Um, the pay here is not that good. A change of income is like the greatest thing for, for us as a family. And the other thing is I have time. I, I have to, I can save money. I can invest money. I can uh, start doing things that I have never, never really think of because uh, I was living to, to pay the rent and that was it. I was winning here in, in, in Chile, like uh, $2,200 per month. And right now in, in this new freelance job is 11,000 euros a month. Sick. That's a, yeah. it's a five edge, literally. That's insane. Literally. Why did you start freelancing? I've always wanted to do entrepreneurship, but a big inspiration to me was also on YouTube. You were one of the inspired. I remember it was 2023. I was watching a video on your life story. You said one of the best decisions you ever made was actually quitting Heineken, which was paying you a lot of money at the time and quitting the corporate rat race. So I think if you see a video like this and you've been wrestling with entrepreneurship and freelancing for a while, I think this is your chance to do it. So what's the biggest mistake you see aspiring tech freelancers make or maybe biggest misconception they have? And what advice would you give them? Biggest misconception is they don't have enough experience. They think they don't have enough. They think, so it's more about perception. The biggest mistake, they don't start. So my advice, start today. Okay, I don't have the necessary skills to do this. If I want to be a freelancer or a consultant, I need to be, I need to know everything basically. You just need to be better than 50% of the people in your role. So that was the biggest hurdle to know, okay, it's enough. Like I, I have the necessary skills to start on this path. Don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. If you don't have the experience or knowledge, trust me, you probably do. And you're, you're facing some imposter syndrome and then and if you don't, you'll get the experience and knowledge from servicing your first two clients. Every, everyone thinks that in the nine to five, you have this like, um, you are like secure and it's not like that. The company, if they want to let you go, they're going to let you go. They're, they are not your friends. I think the, bi the biggest uh, misconception is that it is risky and it's nothing like that. It's, I think it's the same as uh, being a nine to five. How do you determine how much to charge for your first freelance project? Negotiation is a skill. Try to 
not give them a number unless you have to aim higher than what's your dream scenario is going to be just give them a like crazy number in my experience it hasn't been a bad thing that they would say okay this person is too expensive we're not just going to go with that i did two things in order to benchmark my salary per hour mm -hmm. i did one went to linkedin started approaching other freelancers and simply asked the question, what do you do? How much do you earn? That's one. Second thing, once I set up my LinkedIn page, recruiters started approaching me for projects and I would ask the same thing. How much do I get per hour for this project to every recruiter? And then after a while for a few projects, I get a pretty good indication. Don't underestimate how important getting the knowledge, because you, you have to get confidence. You can't pitch ten to $20,000 on a project if you've never done a project before, right? So you need to do your time. You can charge discounted rates. Go to a local business near you. Just say, hey, can I volunteer? Look at your data, maybe make a dashboard for you and get exposure, get comfortable. Once you get that confidence, then you can start pitching. And if you're doing a really good job with them, it will start paying you. When you're getting started, don't just chase the money, chase the experience and knowledge. And then what do you think of Data Camp for aspiring data analysts or people who just want to improve their portfolio and skills? What do you think of Data Camp? To be completely honest, I haven't used Data Camp, so I cannot give um, an answer to that. However, uh, from the people that I know that did use Data Camp, they were really positive. I have used Data Camp, um, especially when I was getting started. I think I like, so I think the education, online education system needs a lot of refining, especially in the technical skill space. The nice thing about Data Camp is that they've done a really good job at having the IDE directly in the browser where you just watch a video and you can immediately practice it rather than watch a bunch of videos. And I think they did a really good job with the flow. Um, they also did a good job with the learning path. A lot of people get stuck on like what the path is to learn and they don't, they kind of structure it in a way where you, you should know enough um, for data science, data analytics, data engineering. Granted, when I was there, it, when I used it, it was just data analytics and data science, but I know they've been adding a lot more other tools. Yeah, I've seen a lot of AI stuff uh, these days. Shout out to Data Camp. Link in the description. Good, good tool. All right, be honest. When's the last time you watched a sponsored YouTube video where other people in the video are promoting the sponsor instead of the YouTuber itself? I'm telling you, I've been recommending Data Camp for years already. So if you want to start your career in data, or if you want to improve your data skills, get some certification, or even get good with AI so you can raise your hourly rate as a tech freelancer, then Data Camp is the place to be. I'll leave two links in the description. One's called the Data Analyst with Python Career Track, and the other one is called Data Analyst with Power BI, two of the most in-demand data skills you could have. So click the links, get a discount, get good at data, and start getting paid more in your tech career. I can't make it easier than that. Back to the interview. Data analysts, software developers, software engineers, that are uh, good at what they do. How much experience do they actually need before they can start freelancing? To get started, I think two years enough to entry-level roles. And then for more senior positions, I would say five years. I think two or three, it wasn't much. I think it's also a big misconception that people think you need like 10 years of work experience before you can even start freelancing. There are people in corporate who work 10, 20 years, but they aren't good at what they do. So it's like, I'd rather take the guy with one or two years of really personalized experience that's really good at what they do than the guy with like 20 years of experience. And they were just kind of cruising along, coasting in corporate at a big Fortune 500. I do have two and a half years of consultancy work behind me, so I'm not just uh, this new data analyst who came out of nowhere. But I did four months of intense training for Tableau and Alteryx, and then two and a half years of experience. If there is one tool, one platform, or one website you have to use to get freelance projects, which would it be? I would say LinkedIn, for sure. Because to be honest, that's the only one I've used, and also it's the biggest one that's around, so pretty clear. And it's still underrated. A lot of aspiring freelancers think of Fiverr and Upwork first when it comes to freelancing, yet LinkedIn is the one that you would recommend, and me too. You won't find a, the airport you work for on Fiverr, you won't find a bank on Fiverr, or you won't find a whatever on, on Upwork. The bigger clients are on LinkedIn, but for some reason people think freelancing, gigs, Fiverr. Upwork, definitely, just because people are already looking for service providers there. The one thing with Upwork I will say is um, the quality of clients are a bit, like they know what they want, they're going to treat you like a contractor. The way they treat contractors versus full fund employees is very different though. Like I've had clients on Upwork where they're like, get this project done over the weekend. They can make two days to do it and you get underpaid, but at the end of the day, it's like you're doing it because you, you want exposure and experience. So if you could give one piece of advice to tech professionals out there watching this, how to find a high paying freelance project as fast as possible. What would you say? I would say uh, 
fix your LinkedIn, make everything a coherent story so that the key skills are highlighted, what you, what the expertise is that you want to sell to companies. And third, reach out to everyone. Capitalize LinkedIn. It's only there. LinkedIn is a social media that uh, you can use. Actually, the thing is that uh, something that you said in the first place uh, when I joined the mastermind is that all your competition is not using it. So if you are the only one using it and using it good, you are like uh, miles away from the rest. And something that really worked for me is don't be shy. Mm. Add people, engage with people, post everything, even though you think it's not good, post it anyway. Add recruiters, try to talk to them. That's the best way. How do you see the tech freelance market changing the next, well, with AI, it's super hard to say, but let's say three to five years. Good question. So there was a podcast with Joe Rogan and Naval Ravikant um, in 2019 I listened to. He had a really bold prediction that the gig economy is going to take over. It's going to replace nine to fives to some degree. The reason for that is because it's a lot easy, especially in downturns, like we've had a pretty downturn and we're in kind of a downturn now. Businesses don't want to take on a fixed cost like 100 or 200K hiring a data analyst or data scientist in the Bay Area, right? They'd rather just hire someone on a project or contract basis. Whereas they need you, they can just pay you rather than having to like forecast it for years and then maybe having to let you go. So I, I predict, especially for the smaller, the mid-sized businesses, there's going a lot more demand for the freelance market. Agreed. The flexibility uh, is becoming more of a, a thing companies want. Exactly. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah, that's a very good question. It might sound counterintuitive, but I think in the near future, your personal and business skills will become more important than actually your technical skills. Mm. Also, well, what I see, there's a really big gap or vacuum or how you want to call it between on the one side, technical people and on the hand, the business people. And the gap in, with, in between was traditionally filled with the data analyst. However, with AI coming into place, the technical part will be more automated. Yeah. You don't need to do it yourself. However, to really provide business value, you need to have like the personal skills and the business skills, mm. because that will be the only way to actually get your technical solution being adopted by the business. Yeah. And that's what you want to achieve. So my prediction is that your business skills and social skills will become more important than your technical skills. There you go. Interesting. By the way, if you like videos where I talk about tech freelancing, then check out my second YouTube channel that I just launched, where I'll talk exclusively about tech professionals and how they can become high paying tech freelancers. Go over there, subscribe and check out the videos.